first of all, I'd like all of you to appreciate the efforts of the organizers here. Give them a huge round of applause, please. <laughs> They've been on this, all the students here, all the volunteers. I've been seeing them. It's wonderful to see their efforts. Uh, Northeast has always been very close to me. And there's a huge, you know, very good story behind it. Exactly six years ago, when I was in Bagdogra, I was a criminal. Air Force police was behind me. Air Force intelligence was behind me. I had uh, run away from a job in the Indian Air Force as a flying officer. And nobody knew for almost six to seven months where exactly I was. I was roaming around in the beautiful states of the Northeast, not knowing what the consequences were. And by the time I realized it was too late, obviously I got back, I faced the consequences. I was discharged from the Indian Air Force. And after that, life took a different turn. Now this talk is not about what happened or what I did after that. This talk is about how we exactly perceive life whenever something good or bad happens to us. Whenever someone says the word life, I, I get confused. Life is such a beautiful, strange, eccentric. So many adjectives can be used for life. And yet, whenever we speak of life, it always comes down to one question. What is the purpose of life? So many of us keep asking, what is the purpose of my life? Why am I doing engineering? Why am I doing MBA? Why am I in this corporate job? Why am I going to an office after being stuck in traffic for almost two hours? Is this the purpose of my life? This is one question which always comes up in our head. And it comes up more often than not when you see more and more of life. Uh, more than reaching out or seeking an answer to what exactly is the purpose of life, what we should be focusing on is how to live a life or to be more precise, how to live a good life. Now, I'll tell you a very small story. Uh, I'm from the National Defense Academy, and uh, when we get inside it, our services are already allocated. So if someone is in the Air Force, he already knows he's in the Air Force, Army, Navy. So the initial two years, the training is same for everyone. Now, it so happens that some of them are Air Force aspirants, but due to uh, you know, shortage of vacancy or not getting on into the merit list, they are allocated army, but they are Air Force aspirants. Now, during my time, in the fourth term, there used to be a chance for a few lucky army aspirants to change their service into Air Force. Now, I had this junior who, whose dream was only to fly all his life. Unfortunately, he couldn't make the merit list, so he got his service as army. And I could see him. He used to come to me and say, sir, like, can you guide me? You're an Air Force uh, cadet. You're your senior term. What exactly should I be doing so that my service is changed in, in my fourth term? And unfortunately, his service did not change. He, he, he was shattered. He wanted to leave the academy. He said, flying was my only dream. I don't want to stay here. And most of the seniors, including me, we, we counseled him. We guided him. That's what seniors do in the military. And he stuck on. He joined the army. He passed out from Indian Military Academy after a year. Three years after that, around a year ago, I get a call from him. And he was very excited. He was very, very happy. I couldn't make out exactly what had happened. And he told me, sir, I got into army aviation. I'll be flying helicopter. And it was such a nice moment where you suddenly realize that Life is not that bad after all. Thing. Time is the most important thing. When I say time, today if I'm standing here, I have my clothes, I have parents back at my home, I have money in my wallet, I have a job, I write books. But there is no guarantee that one week from now, two weeks from now, this is going to exist. Anything can happen. But what you have throughout your life is this particular second which just passed away. 
this second, which again passed away. That is the only thing you own in your life. Nothing else. Your parents are going to be here tomorrow. Maybe not after six years, seven years. All the money you have, you might go bankrupt. I'm not being negative, but that is a fact. Life can change because change is the buzzword eventually. But the only thing you own is the time. And time is very funny. You know, time can alter facts. Time can be altered with energy. Let me give you a very small example. Today I am 27 years old. It's a fact. So it's a truth. I'm not lying. I'm actually not lying. I'm 27. Um, so when I say I'm 27, it's a fact. It's true. But given a certain amount of energy and time, this will not remain true two years from now. I'll be 29. So with the passage of time, the truth has changed. The fact has changed. And so has life. And that is how we are supposed to perceive it. We don't. We love being in our comfort zone. We just love it. You tell someone to get out of the comfort zone, they'll do all the tantrums possible in the world. We don't accept the fact that change and time are like husband and wives, and life is the kid. Second fact, coming back to the first question, what is the purpose of my life? What is the purpose of your life? Whatever we do in our lives, we use energy or we give out energy. As science says, energy can neither be created nor destroyed. It can only be transferred from one medium to another. Correct? Like, correct me if I'm wrong. So whatever we do, right now I'm speaking to you, sound energy is going to you and you're perceiving it. If I'm walking, I'm spending energy. If I'm listening to you, I'm spending energy. So whatever I do in my life, I'm giving out energy. It can be either positive or negative. People call it as karma. I don't like to go into such words. It gets derogatory at times. But the end point is that whatever I do, either I'm spending energy, and when I'm spending that energy, I'm giving it out. I'm giving it out to the world. And the world is like a mirror. So whatever I do, it will eventually come back to me. Suppose a boring maths lecture is going on, and you're sitting at the back bench. Now, you just teased or abused your lecturer sitting at the back bench. And the next row laughs because you're funny. You're the cool dude. You've given out some energy. Now, the people in the front row, they perceive it as positive because you're providing them comic relief. But it's, in the end, negative energy, which has gone into the world, which is there in the classroom. And it will keep spinning there till it strikes the mirror called life. It will come back to you when you get your marks. That is how life works. So the entire purpose of your life is to give out energy to other people, to create, create things as small as a smile on someone else's face by being kind, being humble. By creating, I mean being artistic, making sure that people around you are comfortable even when you are not. That exactly is the entire cycle of energy that you need to keep spreading it around. If you don't want to take it into a very scientific definition, it's as simple as do good and be good. And trust me, whatever you are in your life, wherever you are, no matter how depressed, how sad you are, you'll come back from it. That's how I got out of my depression. I started helping people. I started talking to people. Even today, except for this weekend, because I'm here, every weekend, at least 35 to 50 students are there in my room. Most of them for service selection board counseling. Some of them come because they've had heartbreaks, failures, rejections. And whatever I'm telling you right now, I tell them the same thing. Be good and help others. And that is the only way how you can come out of sadness or how you can fulfill the purpose of your life. You might, you might be a billionaire. You might be a millionaire. I'm not impressed. Unless and until you're kind, you can make someone smile or you can change others' lives.
There was a very good uh, line which I heard on the internet a few days ago, and it said, your life's purpose, purpose is fulfilled only when someone wants to give up and you don't let them give up. And I think I have experienced it, I'm not boasting or bragging, and that is the most beautiful feeling. Uh, moving ahead, uh, I have this uh, this graph which symbolizes life. I call it the Eminem graph because Marshall Mathis has inspired me a lot in my life. How many Eminem fans in the house? Awesome, so you'll get it. <coughs> now, when I say life, it's about ups and downs, as even Ashish was saying. It's about ups and downs and a lot of other things. And most of us don't know how to perceive it, as I was saying before as well. We have been taught from our childhood that being black is not beautiful. Being in pain because our body has taught it is not a good thing. Being evil for a while is not a good thing. But trust me, only when you're a little bit evil will you enjoy your life more, at least in that particular moment. So this is the graph. It's a very simple graph. It's a sine curve which goes up and it goes down. This is your life at any moment of time. It might be not this symmetrical. It might be a bit asymmetrical. Sometimes the upper part of the graph might be higher. Sometimes the lower part of the graph might be really low. But the point is that it's always a curve. It's never a straight line. Now, what I want to show you is this one. As I said, life is about change accompanied by time. So at any point of time, you can either be happy or you can either be sad, which is wrong. What you need to do is see happiness and see sadness as the same. That is the trick. If I tell you that today, if you're successful, you'll go all guns out. Cool, because you earned it. But what if you're a failure? Do you have the courage? Do you have the audacity to treat both happiness and sadness as the same? No matter whatever you are doing, your efforts are always going in. Even if you say, I have given up in my life, this curve will keep moving. And if you stop your efforts, the bottom part of the graph will keep going down. But the most beautiful thing about this graph, this curve, is no matter how happy you become, no matter how sad you become, eventually it will change. So what you need is that straight line in between called attitude and perception, where you tell yourself, he, whatever happens in my life, I'm going to keep the same attitude and I'm going to adapt to it. Again, I'll tell you how I came up with this graph. It's a very interesting story. Uh, during my fourth term in academy, uh, we have this camp run. It's called Camp Rovers. And it's supposed to be the most difficult military training camp for that particular age group. At the end of the camp, there's a Josh run. It's about 45 kilometers from the academy. There's a site called Andgao. And we run through mountains and everything. And it's completely wet. During my time, it was wet. It's horrible. We are carrying a 15 kg haversack. We're carrying a rifle in our hands, and the entire squadron, my squadron, Delta squadron, there were around 22 people. And in academy, every squadron has different traditions. For my squadron, Delta squadron, it was doing good in camps. It was winning camps. So it was a matter of life and death for us. And we are running this. It's around 1 in the midnight. We have map readers who read the map and tell us the way. And we are running, we are running. We are tired, we are dehydrated, we don't know what is happening, which is blindly running. We reach this top of a peak, and the map reader says, dude, this is the wrong peak. And we see like 400 meters that side, that is the mountain we are supposed to climb, and we see the officer waving his torch from there. And we are like, screwed, we are going to lose. And the map reader said, I have one way. And I'm like, what is it? He said, let's just jump down. 
And we're like, are you mad? We can't do that. It's like I can see on the map, initial 100 meters is steep. After that, the next 300 meters is a gradual slope. We can do it. So in our mind, we are thinking, if we lose, we are going to get ragna, 100%. If we do this, we will die, which is a better option. No, no, that is not the thinking. So we go. 17 of us. There's one Afghani cadet also. He was the Afghani army general's son, Abdullah. I still remember him. He was in the front. So we had these pole staffs, and we were going down like this for at least 50, 60 meters. And then, as the map reader said, it just became like this. And we're sliding, we're sliding. It's not ending at all. Like 10 minutes, 15 minutes have passed. And it's basically like I am sliding down. The guy behind me, his legs are hitting my head. His pole staff is hitting my head. His rifle is hitting my head. And we're not thinking anything. We're not in a state to think because we have been running from six, seven hours. Our mind, body, everything has gone numb. And then suddenly everything stops in the front. Abdullah holds on to a coconut tree or some palm tree and he says in his Hindi accent, Sala aage khai hai. The huge trench in front of us, which is almost 200 feet. We asked the map reader, now what? He said, there's one more way. I just saw it on the map. Let's go. One hour later, we climbed that peak. We didn't win. We finished third. But the whole point I'm trying to make is there will be obstacles. There will be failures. There will be times when you feel, why am I even doing this? What's the whole point of it? Trust me, if you have not not, I'm not saying this because at that point of time my mind was numb or my body was numb or I had my course mates with me. Just keep pushing yourself. Just keep this attitude line straight. The graph will go up and down depending on your efforts, depending on your passion, if that's actually a word. I don't believe in that. But keep that line straight. Keep going. When you go through hell, keep going. One more place where I actually uh, applied this graph was, I'm a very crazy guy. So uh, three months ago, I did this bike trip from Kanyakumari to Kashmir. It was on a 150cc bike, the Suzuki Jigsaw, in 121 hours. It's like four days, to be precise. The reason I did it in 121 hours was because my course name was, course number was 121. And somewhere I have this regret inside me that I betrayed them and I betrayed the academy, my alma mater, which I, I owe, owe everything to them. And I wanted to do this. And I stay in Bangalore. So I, from Bangalore, I had to go down first to Kanyakumari and start from there. And my only aim was if there is back pain, if there is bum pain, I am not going to stop until my bike engine heats up. And trust me, I covered 4,355 kilometers in four days flat. And the only reason I was able to do is because of that single line. When you travel across India, the weather changes. And it was June or July something, and monsoon was following me from behind. So when I left Kanyakumari, it started raining there. When I left Bangalore, it started raining in Bangalore. By the time I crossed Gujarat and entered Rajasthan, it was hot. I finished 12 to 15 bottles of water in 3-4 hours. It was so hot and humid in Rajasthan. And then suddenly again you cross Jammu, you enter a totally different region in Kashmir. It was all a horrible experience according to you guys because you're thinking, oh, I can't even dare think about this. But while doing it, I was enjoying it, even if it was paining, even if I was suffering, because I believed in the fact that graph needed to go up and this line was taking me forward. So in the end, uh, just to conclude, two things I'd like to revise. I, I, like, I like revising things because I've had two breakups. So the first breakup, I screwed up my life. And when the second breakup happened, I was like, chill, I'm good in revision. I'm not going to screw up again. Again, that same line came into the things. The graph went down, I was like, OK, I'll still go. So the purpose of life is to be kind, is to create smiles, is to help people, whatever position you are in, howsoever much you are suffering, be kind, keep that, make someone smile. That's the best thing in the world.
And second, understand the fact that time and energy will change your life. It's always going to change. It's, not, it's never going to remain the same. Everything has to change. And that's the beautiful thing about life. If you're suffering right now, you might not be after some time. If you're happy right now, you might not be after some time. Deal with it. Accept with it. Make sure you see every single aspect of your life in the same way. And most importantly, always remember this famous line, which I've always kept close to my heart. If winter comes, can spring be far behind? Thank you so much.